The sun salutations or Siri Namaskar are the basis of all yoga asana. It is the ability to move the body in a purposeful way to wake up the blood, to wake up the body heat in order to move energy. The grandfather of modern day yoga, Krishmacharya once wrote, where is the conflict when truth is known? Where is the disease when the mind is clear? Where is death when the breath is controlled? Therefore, surrender to yoga. There is also an ancient teaching that says no one is wise by birth, for wisdom results from one's efforts. As someone who has practiced yoga for 17 years now, I will tell you the gifts that you will learn about yourself and about the world at large are infinite when you start to dig deep inside the majesty of your own body. In this episode, Shanti and I will be talking about the journey through the sun salutations, the journey through the body, the mysticism of the body, and the original conspiracy theorist, the yogis. Hello, everybody. I know we're filming this on Saturday, but this is going to be airing on Sunday. So happy Sunday, fun day. Appropriately enough, this is Sunday is the halfway point of this. Can you believe it's already been 30 days, Shanti, of the 60 day shadow work challenge? It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. And I'm also 11, you know, checking on the group. And it's really good to see how everyone is just so cool with each other. It's lovely, oh, really. Absolutely. We got guys in the group now, Shanti. We have men in there. Like, they're so active in the group. Uh, Mark, Steve, like, these guys are, like, kicking it and killing it in the group. And it's just so awesome. I know. I, I, I feel bad because those of us who run channels, we don't have – you know, we're, we're constantly filming. And so I, I'm so grateful to Jan and to Sal. We have some really great moderators in there that are, are some of our viewers that have really, I was telling Sal and Jan last week, like they are the reason why that group is still running because they have really, really taken control of like really helping keeping the chat going. And it's just awesome, guys. Uh, make sure if you're not in that signal group and you want some friends and you need support, because shadow work can be hard. The work can be very draining sometimes. I mean, you're a human being. We're working through your nervous system. And so it sometimes it helps to know that you're not alone. And sometimes it helps to know that it's it's okay to have days where you're sad. And, and it's okay to have days where where you 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 know, we have expectation and we have reality. And sometimes the, the expectation is not the reality. And so it, it, it's, it's nice to have friends um, around the world that can help and hold your hand and just give you virtual hugs. And so um, it is, I think it's appropriate we're doing this video on the halfway point because we're going to be talking about the loveliest sun salutations um, and the challenge. And I was telling Shanti last night, I went through, I have, I have like bahoodles of books and I went through and found some of my older books that I bought in India years ago. And this is one of them called Help Healing and Beyond. I will put a link to it in the description box. It was written by Desika Char, who was Krishmacharya's son. Um, Krishmacharya, who's the man in the picture, he was the man that's responsible for making yoga, um, accessible to people outside of India. And I'm going to read a quote from, but I just wanted to show this quick picture, you guys, this really old picture of these students. And this kid right here, who's in a posture called Kapotasana, Krishmacharya is standing on top of this deep back bed. That is Guruji. That is my teacher's. That's uh, my boyfriend's teacher was this little kid right here who's now passed away, but um, he passed away at like 98, but that was him uh -huh. as a small boy. And that's Krishmacharya, his teacher. Um, see, and that's, that's the back bend I was in where I punched a punch Tim Feldman coming out of that back bend when I got pulled <laughs> years ago, the only person I've ever punched um, coming out of that back bend. But I wanted to go <laughs> and read this quote. I thought this was beautiful. This is in the introduction. Um, 
where Desika Charis is writing about his father and the many definitions that his father gave for yoga. And one of this, he goes, yoga means arriving at a place we have not been before. There is this Krishmacharya interpreted literally. Human potential is limitless in its capacity for clair clarity and comprehension and change. And I loved that. That the human that Krishmacharya believed that human potential is limitless in its capacity for clarity, comprehension, and change. It's going into places we have not been before. And I just love that. My teacher used to, you know, we know the, the base word of yoga means to yoon. But if we go deeper into that, in order to find union between everything, there has to be mental focus and mental clarity, which is one of the definitions of meditation is to find that that one pointed focus. And and that's and, and we use the asana. So for those who are, are very new to the yoga practice, you know, the asana, the postures that you see so famously see are a huge part of the practice, but they're not the meaning of the practice. It's a tool. And I always tell my students, if you're using the postures as a way to feed the ego, you're not doing yoga. But if you're using the postures as a way to know yourself, to work through yourself, to use your body to reveal things to you, that's yoga. And it starts with the sun salutations. The sun salutations are the birthplace of all the yoga asana, of everything. If, if that is a complete practice in itself, it's just the sun salutations. And that's... Uh, it is. I'll it, tell you what, it totally is a complete practice. You know, I must say, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Bryce, no, but just on that point... It was just like I'm a, in the years gone by as well. You know, if I've been able to only have 20 minutes or half an hour, I would literally go and do 12 sun salutations and that was it. You know, because it really is uh, an amazing way just to get the energy flowing through the body. It's 12 postures all rolled into one if you will. So you're getting bending, stretching, twisting, all of these things, you know, flexing, um, and that's exactly what your body needs, you know, it improves your circulation, your breath, of course, is your fuel, uh, it releases the blockages with the bending, twisting, stretching, breathing, especially the breathing is amazing, because the breathing is uplifting, and especially with the sun salutations, because it's one breath, one movement. So it's like, yes, and I want to, she's, I love that you brought you it know, up. I talk about that because we learned, so this is, I'm just pulling this up quickly. This is from one of our manuals in the Ashtanga practice. We start every single, whether you're doing primary series, second series, whatever series you're doing, you, everybody starts with the sun salutations and Shanti's right. And I tell my students, that if you only have 15 minutes, you just do the sun salutations. Like that is the bare bones of, of everything you need. My, my original teacher, David Garig would say like, if you were going off to a deserted Island and you could only bring five yoga postures with you, that's all you could bring. You're not going to be bringing the fancy postures. You're going to be bringing the foundational postures because that's where it's juicy. And so we have this in our manuals with with our with our students. And yes, and what I tell my students, so yeah, movement. It's it's we we use the word vinyasa a lot. And what the word vinyasa means is a choreographed movement with breath. So an on purpose movement with breath so like the first position of surya namaskar a where you're bringing the hands together above your head that's the akam inhale so you're inhaling as you're lifting the arms up and then you're exhaling to way exhale as you fold and that starts to work with the bundas really which then gets the blood moving and the blood is that beautiful expression of your soul and your spirit and like when you're holding downward facing dog for five breaths i tell my students all the time you know downward facing dog in itself is um, a variation of a handstand so you're pressing in, you're starting to really press into the hands and feel the fingers pressing into the floor as the arms grow and protract. And the more the body heats up, the more you're going to feel the body unstick. You're going to feel the ribs start to move. You're going to start to feel as the heels are grounding down to the floor. I don't care. I know Shanti doesn't care if your heels ever touch the floor. It's not about that. It's about the pushing down to allow that energy to move through the hamstrings, to move into the belly. What a lot of people don't know, I find in my classes that forward folding, um, any type of forward fold, people often think, oh, my God, 
you, it's about the hamstring. So that's secondary. The main purpose of forward folding is your digestive system is being able to move the colon and allow the blood to flow through. And every time you go upside down, especially in like a downward facing dog, you're actually resting the organs upside down. So there's so much intelligence behind just the sun side. I always tell my students, literally, we could probably teach like a three hour workshop just on everything that's happening in this, in this. And so, um, and so, yes, I'm so, I'm so excited. I, mean, I just can't, this is something that's real. And this was all your idea, Shanti, was to do this, to do a 21 day sun salutation challenge towards the middle of the challenge, the shadow work challenge. So what gave you this yeah. idea, Shanti? What was like, when you wake up, you're like, this would be a really good idea. I love, I love yoga, but you know, for me, I'm not a purist in anything I do. So anyone will know that about me. Um, it's like God came, you know, when I came down to earth, God said to me, gave me this beautiful array of gems and say, how would you like to worship or honor me in this life? And I'm going, only one way? Are you <laughs> kidding? So, you know, for me, I really find the best way that I work, have worked in my life. And I've also been extremely hard on myself. I'm very competitive with myself i come from a family of six i grew up having to compete for my for my role in the family so i would compete you know <clears throat> and of course i grew up uh, playing competitive sport so it was really great you know uh to when i started doing yoga many years ago just to understand how to relax you know for me it was really just about bringing the mind body complex into alignment so the breathing with the yoga for me is amazing because it's just calming the mind down it calms everything down and i love to do things in a structured way it's like you know when i did my teacher training in india in the shivananda lineage you know and i i mean i was i was 47 or so when I went to where for my teacher training, I only started doing yoga when I was 45, six. That was when I started doing yoga, you know. Um, so it for then I love to teach beginners and I love to take things and I love to break them down in bite-sized chunks. It's like, you know, my mission in this life, I was born with this amazing gift where I understand things. I can see it clearly, but very few others could so it was like i have to take something very intangible or very abstract and turn it into something tangible so over the years i've done that with my sun kids stuff i've done that with my workshops you know the my alchemy courses the whole energy we don't see energy we sure as heck feel it though you know so it was that yoga for me was the last step of integrating all of that into my body. So for me, yoga was really the inter integrative, is that the right word? Yes. Yeah. Practice of yeah. everything that I had understood physically. So for me, yoga is really an enjoyment. It is such a beautiful pleasure. It is It is the stretching. I'm, I love to stretch. And I know you're not a great yin fan, but I will definitely say yin is the complement to yang. Mm -hmm. So yang is the masculine. And if you're only doing masculine style yoga, you're not getting the yin in as oh, well. There, that, that, the, that the exists juice. in Ashtanga. We do deep stretches in Ashtanga, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We get really so hot it's the and sweaty. Juice and then we, that our, in. we get real hot and yeah. sweaty. Our legs so, and and <laughs> It does. Sweating is good. I'm I'm strong. I love a strong practice. But I want to tell you as well, with the yin, the stretching, you're sitting in a position, uh, a stretching position for up to five minutes. Now, I want to tell you, when you're in that position, it's the subtle body. That's that's really where you learn how to calm your nerves. You, that's where you learn. It's actually more challenging than yang in the sense that you have to calm your mind down. It's amazing when you're sitting in a position for such a long time and you stretch. I mean, even if it's just a forward bend, I mean, I'm good at forward bends, but let me tell you, when I'm sitting in a forward bend for five minutes, 
that last minute especially i mean the first three are bliss right and then i start getting <laughs> okay where and then you start feeling and that's it, it, it creates the synovial fluid between the joints it brings in that feminine gentle supportive to the body it really is an amazing practice to do so i like to combine my practices which is why i then took my beginner practice that i learned when i was in india and i actually broke it down into segments of eight weeks so not only do i bring in the 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 12 uh, original postures of, of the yoga practice the, the 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 core postures which is what you learn in in the, your 500 hours um but you're also bringing in uh you know then i was bringing in my teachings you know when that aligns to that look look look, look. so it was really amazing as well as the sound so i really like to break things down and I have an idea about things uh, like and when I it was like, wow, I want to do this a week of 36, a week of 72, a week of 108. And as I was doing it in my first 36 on day three or four, I remember. Um, <clears throat> OK, <laughs> on day three or four, I remember. Uh, yeah, on day three or four, I remember that that. Um, I then got the idea that I actually wanted to do that with my group of students as well, you know, so to do it. And then obviously just looking at the numbers because the number 36, you see, if you look at th three plus six is nine, seven plus two is nine and one, uh, one plus eight is nine. Nine is the cycle of completion. Okay. It's the end of a cycle. Cycle is being the zero, zero, zero running around and boom. Then the one is the new beginning. It has the same a new a new a numeral, uh, <laughs> numerical value as zero. If you look at it, nine plus seven is sixteen. Six and one is seven, right? Mm -hmm. Zero plus seven is seven. So we got to look, and so the, but but the number three plus six has a different vibration to seven plus two. So three plus six is all about the 36. And that's why the first week we bring your intentions to the fore, your prayers, your desires. Do you want a life that has more meaning? Are you trying to resolve relationships? Are you trying to break away from something? Do, do you want something more uh, structured in your life? Do you, are you looking for love? I don't know. Whatever it is that's in your, in your space, then you will obviously know what it is. But for the first week of 36, there might be more than one thing. You know, set your intention. And because at, at the beginning of every practice, you set your intention, right? Because yoga is a prayer through through your body to the divine. So you set your intention. You then, you know, and then what I found, because I'm now on, on my fourth cycle. I'm, I think tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow is my last day of 36 on my fourth cycle. So um, what happens then is, is, is I have found that, let's say I set my intention for something just to figure it out, right? Often it dissolves within that first practice. I'll get my answers then, you know, but then I, I, I found that with things. So I'll set the intention. I'll say, okay, cool. That's, that's clarified now. Bring something more. So then you bring something maybe deeper, something more long term. And you just work with that. And that's your intention. So that's why for the first seven days, we only do 36. We're going to shake it up with 36. I ask you not to go further than that. There's a method in my madness. So just to be able to, you know, keep it at 36. Then I'm going to ask you guys to take a day break, one day break. Okay. Between 36 and 72. I just want you to give your body a break because you will find it's quite intense not only will you start getting a lot of spiritual clarification but you find your body gets stronger firmer it's like more toned you feel more energized i don't know something happens within the body you you can't explain it unless you experience it okay then give yourself one day break now then we move on to 72 seven days of 72 now, 72 would be the number where you got to find the balance. So let's say now after 36, you, okay, this is what's got to be done. So 72 is often where physical changes come in. So let's say uh, you, you, you want to leave your job. You'll often find you might get fired or retrenched or suddenly you get another job offer or something like that. 
or there's an opportunity for you to move out of your relationship or your marriage, or I don't know, whatever it is, something comes that you can study something. So you might need to this time make physical changes. And that can often be very scary for people to make the physical changes, right? So this is what you work with. This is often the time that you can feel a bit raw. Gosh, I had experiences on my third cycle of 72, like out of the blue on day five and six, I was on my mat and suddenly that's when I said, I just got the insight that my sister had collapsed. Um, I knew what needed to happen. I knew what needed to do. It was just out of the blue. So suddenly it's like, blah, things just erupt in that time. So maybe you need to make peace with someone. Maybe you need to apologize. Maybe you actually need to take a step forward and do something to create the change you've asked for. So that's what 72 is about. It can often be um, a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, unnerving, <laughs> but that's why we have the group and I'll be with you guys. I'll be checking in with you regularly and you'll be obviously welcome to chat with me about stuff like that as well. So then again, after 72, um, you then take another day break. So give your body a break. And all through this time, I suggest you guys journal. And especially in the day you take off where everything is just settling in, you know, things kind of like when you just have a moment to give yourself, then you're going to just settle in and things are going to, and suddenly while you're journaling, things start coming up. And then of course, the 108. And Honestly, this is not half as intimidating as it sounds. I want to just say that, okay? Some people I know who I've spoken to can take up to two hours to do it. Give yourself time. Press the pause button if you need to. Go to the bathroom if you need to. You know, take a drink of water. But come back. I, try not to break it into separate parts of the day. If you can, if that's all you can do, all well and good. But if you're doing it continuously, I'm going to say 36 takes about 20 minutes, round about there. Um, uh, 72 will take you about 35, 40 minutes. And then the 108 will probably take you maybe 50 minutes to an hour if you were doing it like, like after each other, right? But um, if you, you know, you're welcome to take your time. This morning, I, my body was tired. I, I took double the time on my 36 as what I usually did. So you just want to take it at your pace. And just, of course, now 108 is the number where things kind of get exposed and come into fruition. And you get clarity on things and answers arrive. And I have to say, it doesn't mean that it's going to arrive then. It could arrive later, a week later, you know. But the whole thing is you've set the intention. You've, you, you've shown up for yourself every day. That's the whole thing is to show up for yourself. This is about commitment. It's about committing to yourself, showing up for yourself uh, in a gentle, loving way. I'm certainly, as I said, I do things in a gentle way with your body. I always believe your body needs to just feel comfortable. Your body must feel it wants to do more. It's ready. You know, it's like we talk about the root chakra. You know, the, when root chakra is in alignment, it wants to act, wants to act, it wants to act. You know, you must feel ready. That's why I say stick with the 72 and the 36 for the seven days and let your body feel it's ready to move forward, you know, and then you can take it from there. And as I said, the 108 is lovely fruition and it's all about, you know, manifesting and just really, you know, the 108 is also, it's kind of like your rite of passage into the yoga world. And many people I know, will do this once a year. They'll do 108 once a year. That's like their thing, once a year, guys. We're doing it for seven days. It's big, okay? Good. And if you can't do it all, please don't beat yourself up. If you can only do six or 12 or 20 or 30, please don't beat yourself up. Just out where you're at. It might be necessary for you to be stuck on 15, there's something about 15 that's making you stick there. And ask yourself, instead of getting frustrated, oh, I flunked, I didn't do whatever, sit with yourself, get your journal, go for a walk, take a breath, calm down, you know, relax and just see what it is that it is. Just hang on, is there... Apologies for that. There was someone at the door making a heck of a noise. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> 
Well, at least I was, I usually I got people building outside. So thank God they're not doing it today. But no, I love that. And I want to try, I, there's a couple things because I, I looked up while you were saying that we, and I, the opening chant we have in Ashtanga Yoga, we say it before every class. I, I know it like I know it the, at the back of my hand. I was pulling up some, some, some clips of it because I'm going to put it in this video when I'm editing because you're talking about the intention. Well, part of the opening chant for the Ashtanga Yoga, the opening prayer we do before every single practice, which is in the Ayik. So the three traditions, Traditional yogas, guys, the three legitimate lineages of yogas in the world are uh, um, Shanti's lineage, Shivananda, Ashtanga, my lineage, and the Iyengar lineage. Those are the three that are still the remaining like legitimate lineages that come from these the teachers in India. And the Ashtanga and the Iyengar lineage are the, the two that are very closely related. And um, the opening chant we do in Ashtanga Yoga, the first verse, Vande Gurunam Charanada Vinde, that is specific to Ashtanga, where Ayingar has a second one. But the second verse, Abahu Purushakaram Shaka Shakarasi Dariram, that is the same as the Ayingar. And what that says, basically, what that translates to is I go to the jungle doctor to ask for healing. Well, what does that mean? That means that you are you're telling the universe that you are opening yourself up. For whatever is to come, for whatever needs to happen. Yes. I used to have Absolutely. a t-shirt that said, I go to the jungle doctor every day because that's part of the open. It's not, you're literally not going to a jungle doctor, but that's part of what they're saying is you're literally opening up yourself um, to, to proceed to whatever. And for every person, it's going to be different. It's very independent. That's what I love about traditional yoga. You know, in, in a traditional yoga class, we, we practice in Mysore style where we're not leading a class, you know, the class isn't being led. The we have one led class a week where we count the vinyasas. That's it. But in the Mysore room, you know, like AYA is open from like five o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning. A student comes in at any point during that time. And the teacher works one-on-one -on -one with the student and they do whatever series. That's how we do it in India. And that's where it's so powerful. Cause even though people are working through the same template, the postures are the same, depending on what series you are. The, the, the experience is always different for each individual student. It's always going to be different. And the teacher's job is to help you through the template. but it's your job. You, you have to do be, be the one to receive the information and have the experience. And I always tell, and I love you brought that up, Shanti, because, you know, if we, if we take spiritually spirituality out of the practice of yoga, we just look at it from a physical fitness point of view. Yeah. There are going to be some people that might, that are going to be really fit. They're going to be able to move through it. And some people who are going to have to go a little slower and that's okay. All right. I tell my students all the time, like you can't fail yoga. The only way you can fail, you fail, yo fail yoga, fail yoga is that's, you know, and I, I tell my students all the time, there are a lot of flexible assholes out there. Your ability to execute the postures does not def does not determine Absolutely. your value as a human being and your value spiritually. All the postures are, all the sun salutations are, is an experience for you to get into it's your really body. Is. And, ha and it's going to be different. And, and for you, it's going to be some days you're going to be on that yoga mat and you're going to feel like a freaking Cirque du Soleil Olympiad. You're going to be like, where's my agent? Sign me up. My body's feeling great today. It's just open and strong and then the next day you're gonna get on your mat and you're gonna feel like the freaking 10 man you're gonna be falling all over the place and so so that's just how it is and there's no and there's no right or wrong it's just doing it's just doing it and experiencing it Absolutely. and i I, t I love you talked about the body changing and the strength because that's something we in ashtanga yoga we 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 have a lot of extremely uh, there's a lot of, mo I, I don't want to say flexibility because it's not about flex. It's more mobility. We have a lot of leg behind the head stuff. We have a lot of um, standing up with your leg behind your head, dropping back into a back bend and standing back up again. Uh, you know, of course that's not done on your first day. You build up to that. But um, we never talk to students about getting more flexible. That will never come out of a, my, my, my or any other Ashtanga teacher. It shouldn't come out of anybody's mouth because flexibility is fleeting. It changes every day. But what we are going to tell you to do every day is to get stronger. Get stronger. Because something happens to the psyche. When your body starts to shift and those muscles start to get stronger and you're able to lift yourself up and hold yourself into that downward dog position, there's a shift that happens in the psyche and the body starts to move energy 
like that's why like in ashtanga yoga we never passively stretch because that can cause injury because the muscles aren't engaged to move the energy and so when the muscles are engaged they move the energy and that brings that information forward and so yeah i want everybody watching i don't care i know shanti doesn't care i don't give a rat's ass whether you can touch your toes or not doesn't matter but what I care about is, are you feeling the friction? Are you getting the information and having the experience that you need in that in that moment? Because only you can have that. I are you having fun? You know, even if you are going through discomfort, because let anyone who has started yoga will know, it's people have such a weird perception of yoga. I don't know what they think. You sit there and just um. And and meditate and do a few whatever so it's very challenging you know when you start and it's you know and it's amazing not not in the movements or you know as you're getting more advanced but we're just talking about when someone has never down with dog for example a lot of people have no idea how to support the body in that position so if you're just going to clunk down into downward dog you're going to hurt yourself so it's about yeah. really having your hands positioned your arms <clears throat> your you know your your hips and all of that your legs all of that and it's just sorry am i breaking up here oh you were but you're fine now you're fine uh, yeah, you're, yeah. <laughs> Are you it, yeah you're fine now though it's just you know Perfect, thanks. It's just when you start learning, and I think especially what I found over the years, people who've had some abuse at at the hands of others, especially when they were a child and helpless and defenseless, they learn not to trust their body. They learn not to trust that they're safe. They learn not to trust that they're strong. They learn not to trust that they um capable, whatever it is. When I found when we start working with things like yoga and suddenly the mind starts aligning, the body starts getting stronger, you start feeling in control. You see, yoga really is a practice of the mind. That's what it is. You know, the, the physical practice is just a as an aspect of it one of the legs and unfortunately yeah and i can understand why the yogis in india didn't want yoga coming to the west because they didn't and i yeah. can see now why why because it's become usually usually commercialized people are making tons of money off lululemon and god knows what all else um you know it's it and it really isn't that it's not a practice where you joke about having beer yoga or oh no crap like that yeah. that's not I, that 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 to me is such it's offensive when people do it's offensive to, you know i, I, I i'm I, not a yeah. purist yeah. it's offensive to me too when people talk about doing yoga in bars like it's like a slap across my face like it's very offensive yeah. um and i love i love yeah. animal death but i know at aya we have a lot of uh, indian students which i find to be a great honor that they trust us and come to us and there's a atlanta magazine that a free magazine that comes around to businesses and they had a, a a cover story of goat yoga and we had to ask them to not drop the magazine off at our shala anymore because it offended our, our it offended our indian students so much that they were making a mockery out of and, and they love goats too they're vegetarians but the fact that that it was it was making a mockery out of this very sacred practice and so absolutely i totally hear you on that shanti and i'm glad we took because that is very offensive don't call it yoga then just call it goat yeah. pilates or yeah. yoga lattes Go to la uh, go to Lattes or something. Go to Lattes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fine. Yeah. Have, have. <laughs> we going to go to Lattes today. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> uh, I think I think Lattie's it's laugh. great. <laughs> 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 um honestly you know I, and that's why i say i'm not a purist i have no i like to take a bit of this and a bit of that and mix it here and create my own delicious recipe that i call my life and that involves that's why i'm i'm, I'm 
certainly not one denomination. Um, yeah. I love many denominations of, of spiritual studies and ways that people worship God. You know, I think it's amazing. I've had, I've lived in Africa. I see other African people do it. I've traveled not hugely, but a bit. So I see how they do it, uh, you know, in other countries. Um, I've had lots of foreign friends. Um, it's, it's amazing to be able to embrace God in so many ways. And I really think, you know, for me, yoga is all about just enjoying my body. That's what it is. I will not forget, and I think I might have mentioned it before, and apologies if I have, because there's nothing worse than hearing the same story 20 times over. But I read an article many years ago about a guy that, that had an accident, and he was a quadriplegic. And he expressed reg such regret at not having enjoyed his body. And for me, that struck a chord that, and I really felt at that stage I was wasting my body because I know I've got a strong, healthy, fit, very genetically healthy body that's in my genes. So I really just, and that's when I started doing pole as well, you know, and the, the hoop, you know, that hangs from the ceiling. It was when just I, amazing to be able to experience. We're going to do a pole class together when I come visit you. So We're going to put some stripper so shoes fun, on. And so film fun. It. <laughs> I would love to do a pole class it's with just, you. <laughs> yeah, I still have my pole. I'm just going to put it up. <laughs> so I'm just going to have it erected. I'll do, and I can do it. I'm just going to get the right guy, right? Now we don't have men in this house. <laughs> I, I, I don't think my boyfriend would mind if I took pole classes either. So. <laughs> You know how that came about? I have to say, I will never forget many years ago, while I was still living in Johannesburg, I went to one of my friend's bridal party. And instead of having a normal bridal, bridal party, she had a pole dancer. And with the, with one of these, these um, portable poles, and I'm going back, guys, this was long before pole became a thing. Nowadays, it's a thing. This was long before it became a thing. Grandma, yeah, has been around the block a few times. Anyway, so um, it was the funnest evening ever. My body was black and blue because that pole, you, I mean, there were three of us. There, every, everyone else was going, no, no, no. And then she had this, this whole bag with masks on. So you put a mask on, you kind of like just were just this different, confident kind of person. This persona. <laughs> and I was up and down this pole. I just said, every woman should have a pole in her bathroom. And not for her husband. I mean, you, you while he's gone or whatever, uh, you stand there with your G-string you, and if your cellulite wobbles and whatever, beautiful. Have your music on twirling around the pole. Do you know that was the most amazing thing? Because then, and then it was a good few years after that when I moved down here and then I looked for a pole class and I was amazed there was one. And it was a small studio, only three poles, right? So there were only three students at a time. And it was incredible. Do you know the confidence that a woman builds. Um, it, uh, I, I then at the end, I was teaching pole one, so I could teach beginners. I was qualified to teach beginners. And my students, and many of them, it's the first time ever, some a little bit overweight, whatever, I said, okay, there's a rule in this class. No granny panties. Everyone has to wear G-strings under their shorts, and it has to be booty shorts. And you have to wear crop top. I don't care what you think you look like in the mirror. If you come pull, to my I'm class, pull, I'm gonna pull up, I pulled it for I pulled it up for um, Atlanta because you guys, I'm gonna go find one of these classes. I just got. I'm not gonna say my address, but I'm I find tell you, it was amazing. But it is not fun. It is so you have lots of fun doing it with other girls. I went and I actually um, gave my. I bought my friend as well uh, for her birthday. I bought her a month or two, I think. Uh, uh, so we used to go together. And I tell you, we had such fun learning. And it builds your confidence. I, as I said, I had my students coming in there, never even, hardly even, and you got to know, I live in an extremely conservative area as well. Lots of Afrikaans people, and they yeah. brought up very, very conservative. Hadn't, I mean, the one girl, 
does not change in front of her husband. She goes to the bathroom and she gets dressed there. All at the time, that was the story. And I was like, no, 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 no. Not, not, not while you here with Auntie Shanti. <laughs> and I tell you, within a month, that was maybe two, maybe a little bit longer. That girl, her whole vibe changed. It's beautiful. You just twirl a bit and it's got nothing to do. I mean, you've got to do a lot of spins. You've got to practice spinning. The first thing you do is spinning. Okay. Before you can climb anywhere up a pole, you got to spin. You're spinning left you, and you're doing your kicks and it's quite boring in the beginning. And then you start learning how to climb that pole. Oh boy, and then you can start jumping up and flicking your legs up. And that was fun. <laughs> I just so I it. would have, anyway, it's a little bit off the topic, but that was lots of fun. I did that for just, four or five years of my life. These classes, naughty and nature, quick and dirty. I'm going to, listen, <laughs> I'm going to talk to my Atlanta girlfriends who have never done this before. And if you guys want, I'll find a location, I'll reach her, so I'll call them, and I'll see if we can film a class, so if my girlfriends will allow me, of us doing a a, a, a beginner bar, a pole class. So um, that's, I mean, yeah, I, I agree, because I, you were talking about- I highly like, recommend it. And you were it's... talking about, I'm going to show you guys um, the mice store in a second, but I, you got, you're talking about your body, Shanti, and I will agree, I'm, I'm 40 years old now, and I feel better at 40 than I did at 30. And I feel like I'm getting younger. And I was born with a bunch of health problems. And I, 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 I give it all to yoga that I love my body. I love wearing a bathing suit now. Um, this is what I was going to show you guys. This is what a traditional Mysore room looks like. Uh, this is my, my shala in India. So you see how everybody's, and obviously you don't do that on the first day. It takes years to, to lead up to this. But um, I wanted to show you guys, like, every single person in this room is having their own experience. They're not following a lead club. That's my teacher, Sharat. Um, that they're not following a lead, a lead, a teacher telling them to do a certain thing. They're following the different series, but they're doing it on their own independently. And um, and just seeing how the human body is capable of bending, even though you don't do this on the first day, over time, you're by, and to be able to bend like this, um, you have to be strong and you have to build that strength and that opening and the blood and the body. And that's one thing I was reading in this book as well that we say in Mysore, the Mysore magic, the Mysore magic, because we call our classes Mysore. The Mysore magic is when you start to do yoga and you see people in the room doing things and you think, oh God, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. And then one day something in your mind goes, wait a minute, maybe oh, I can't. And there it happened. <laughs> Yes. And that's and everybody yeah. in this room, even my teacher started off one day as a beginner, as a freaking beginner. I mean, um, there was one of my best friends with Ekapada Shirshasana. Um, these are some of my videos from India. I was playing around in India, like being able to allow your body to go upside down in the seven different headstands. I mean, that's just something that as we get older in, in as people when you're practicing yoga your body almost kind of gets a little younger too because you start to be able to do stuff that you didn't think that you could do mm -hmm. um you know and that's and that's here's my friend that's the lady that the girl that uh rescued robbie my dog my friend denise um you know and so it's 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 this incredible uh it's experience to be able to i love when teachers stand on you <laughs> i just love that um to be able to, this is my friend Harmony, who is a teacher up in Canada. That's one of our students at AYA um, when she came down to teach. It's just such an incredible gift that that yoga yeah. gives you. This ability to move your body in ways that you, this is okay. So this was cute. My niece was watching my boyfriend practicing outside and was mimicking him on the inside. And he had no idea <laughs> she was following along with him. <laughs> um, That's cute. It, it's just such an incredible experience to be able to see your body uh, move in ways that you didn't think it it could, and and just to give yourself that gift to understand just how powerful you really truly are, just how amazing you really truly are. Um, um, that's my friend Elizabeth. She's a mother of two. Look at her. You know, like the fact that that you work. They, these people work so hard including us and all of a sudden the body starts to give you that benefit of um of, of working as well and so um yeah 
There's there's Ravi when he that was when Denise first rescued our dog in India. Ravi when he was a little little puppy, little street puppy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, so yeah, I'm glad I I, I um, anything, and that's why I love the bar so much. The I'll show you a pole pick. How about that? You gotta get a pole pick. Oh, I love it, Shanti. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'll show you another one. I love it. I want to, yeah, let me find another one. I'll just, I'll share. Actually, there's another one. Oh my God, I love it. You see, that should be on your match.com. Yeah. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh, uh, yes, another one. Wait, there was a cool one as well. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. It's lots of fun. It is. And Lots that's of what fun. About, and just, you know what? Go ahead. Sorry. Carry on. Well, I'm saying that's what I like about the bar, too. You get to explore your body movement and all me. these ways. <laughs> It's like, and it's all, and that's, and I, that's what um we just had. There was a friend of ours that was just in town who is um teaches in Norway, and he was talking about too, like any time once you understand the principles of yoga, you can incorporate those principles it really into any type of exercise um exercise program because it's allowing the body to experience itself. It's allowing the soul to watch the body experiencing itself. Um, here's AYA's, uh, AYA's my uh, Ashtanga page, our, our Shala page. And just to see these, uh, all the students, just to see like, there's my original teacher, David Grieg, there's Guruji right there. Um, to see all of the, uh, to hear the chanting, to hear the beauty of the words of Om Mitraya Namaha, the voice is coming Om from Namaha, Om Surya the body Namaha, as well. Om Manave Namaha, Om Gagaya Namaha, Om Prashne Namaha, Om Hiranya Garbaya Namaha, Om Marichaye Namaha, Om Arityaya Namaha, Om Savit. And that meditative movement with voice that also comes through the movement of the body too. And so um, I just would, I mean, it's just such a gift. It's, it's, I could talk about this stuff all day. Something I wanted to bring up with you too, Shante, I almost forgot. We were talking about this last night um, that yogis were the original conspiracy theorist because you have to, you have to question your reality in order to practice yoga. That's what yoga is. Yoga is questioning reality. Yoga is finding the truth through the illusion on a very simple, broad base. That's saying that, you know, that you're, Oh, did I lose you, Shanti? I'm here. My camera's giving issues at the moment, but I'm here. Okay. I was like, Oh shoot. Where'd you go? Um, we were saying, you know, for people to want to practice yoga, they they're 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 questioning even themselves and part of yoga is seeing the, yeah, is, is learning to see the truth through the illusion and that truth is that you are it's breaking the bondages of your mind and knowing that you can it's what krishmacharya said it's that your capacity is limitless the matrix wants to put you in bondage but you go wait a minute something's not right I'm, I am limitless. I am. And so that again is the beauty. Yeah, That's what we're saying. Absolutely. The beauty of the practice. And so I really hope that you guys, and it all starts with the damn sun salutations. That's where it starts. And that's always where it ends is those sun salutations. Exactly. In order to be able to do um, postures like this, this student here, guess where she started? Sun salutations. She started with the sun salutation in this practice before she got to this. She started with the sun salutations. You know, it's 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 um this is a this is a Mysore room, guys. This is what a Mysore room actually looks like. And you'll see all the students are practicing at different places and at different in different levels. Um and a teacher walks around and works. Usually there's two or three teachers in the room. Todd is the senior teacher. Um he's the senior most teacher in the southeast, actually. Um and he kind of is the master teacher. All the other teachers walk around and kind of do what he wants them to do with each student. So this student to be able to do this, this is not, she's been teaching, she's practicing for like 10 years. You know, this is where her body is. And through this, this particular student has had like two kids while doing a practice, while growing. And that is just, I mean, I just, that's my favorite thing about um, 
this practice is just the way the people just shock themselves all the time by what they can't what what they thought they could do versus what they can actually do and um one of my favorite quotes is don't believe everything you think and that's what yoga teaches you is usually you are your biggest critic usually your thoughts on yourself are so limitless but when you get into the practice of yoga you start to go wait a minute i'm 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 not i'm not i'm not in bondage that's my choice to be in bondage and i can also choose not to be in that bondage of thought and my body can fly because my spirit has the ability to as well here's the old shala this is the old shala back in the day that's my teacher now um this is Guru to the picture of the young child in Kapitasana. This is him as an old man teaching and the old Shala. And so it's just such a beautiful practice. It's such a beautiful practice, guys. And I hope that um I hope that uh that you guys will join us in this now. So with that being said, back to the sun salutation challenge. With that being said, I um because it's a 60 day challenge, we have so I have we're going to be starting the sun salutation 21 days on February 27th, Monday, February 27th. We did this intentionally because we're, we're building up to a three day fast. So everything is done with Shanti is also going to be, we talked about that and we'll do other episodes on that. We get closer. So we're putting these things in the challenge intentionally at certain dates. Now, because it's a 60 day challenge and because we have people from all over the world doing this, for the for starting February 27th, I have other exercises as well for people who aren't ready to do the sun salutation challenge, or you can do both. You know, there are some people who are going to be able to do the sun salutations and do a bar class, depending on it's your experience. So with that being said, if you want to partake, I didn't want to overwhelm people in the beginning with give, sending too much stuff. If you would like, oh, and Shanti froze, kind of a funny picture, she froze. Um, if you would like to participate in the Sun Salutation Challenge, you have to email me starting today, starting when this this video it, uh, video airs. Oh, if you have a whole week to email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and in the subject line, put Sun Salutations. And I will send you this, I will be sending you this template right here um for uh, shanti's package for the 20 or uh, the 21 day i was about to say the 27 day the 21 day sun uh siri namaskar challenge okay so you guys have to email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com put sun salutations in the subject line and i will forward this over to you so that you have all of this you need in order to prep yourself for the sun salutations. I know, Shanti, are you going to be doing a separate signal chat or just be in the original signal chat? What do you want to do? Um, look, I can. I think what I could maybe do with this, uh, just because may, I, I'm sure not everyone will do it. So I do have a signal group as well where I can post there. Uh, so I can post the stuff in my... It's up to you, actually. I don't I mind in both groups. So I'm just thinking I, the people that are. I would love to have it in the main group, just so even people who aren't, who are, maybe there's some people that are a little afraid to do it right now. Maybe if they see the encouragement from the group, group um, the group. they could, they could see it in the main group and see, um, and I know you've made some videos as well, Shanti, with the sun salutation. So I can share those on my community tab as well. Um, I have my, now you guys, if you yeah. notice on the, shadow work cha challenge uh, up to now every morning i have you guys watching uh the 15 minutes on salutations that i did a long time ago five sorry namaskar e3 sorry namaskar b the reason why i put that in is because i knew we were building up to shanti's challenge so a lot of you guys have already started to work through the sun salutation so i want to encourage you to try this uh, there is no there's no winner there's no loser yeah it's, it's experience. such it's just a beautiful way to commit to yourself, to challenge yourself in a challenging yet non-threatening way. You know, um, it's really something every day. For me, you know, it's so exciting to get a breakthrough. Just get breakthroughs, you know. It's just amazing. It's like kind of we break through the glass ceiling. And then, of course, 
with a three-day fast after that is just amazing. amazing. So I hope you're all going to join. And um, if you haven't, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, is there anything else that I needed to still share about that? I will be probably reminding people every single day this week going forward um, about the Sun Salutation Challenge, but and I'm going to put it in it's the group it. signal as well. Yeah, and, and I'm going to be on your channel on Monday uh, again uh, for Emerald Towels. We can talk, we can take a few minutes to speak about it there as well. Um, just to remind people, we can put the email address in your box too, just to get people to sit for the separate template. Um, again, the re I thought about sending it all at the same time with everything, but I didn't want to overwhelm people who are new to this. So if you want to do the Sun Salutation Challenge, send me an email. Once again, just reiterating, send me an email at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and put in the subject Sun Salutations. And I will send you the template right away. Um, I will start after this airs today. I will be at my I will be at my um my laptop checking that email because I'm sure we're gonna get most everybody's probably gonna be emailing for the template. So and yeah, and and Chanti posted in the in the um signal group too. I will as well. And um and this is gonna be exciting, guys. Uh I'll film myself doing some stuff. I know Shanti's gonna be filming it. You don't have I'm gonna I'm gonna just let you guys know you don't have to film yourself. This is a very private experience. Listen. You can, I practice, it's not where I practice isn't glamorous. I practice in my kitchen by the dog bowl. Usually my pants are on inside out. Usually my hair looks like Albert Einstein's hair at the end of it. It's not glamorous because it's an experience. It's a private experience. Nobody's watching you. So, um, although I will say it's funny, one of our friends in the signal group, because my son saw you Tations video, I literally filmed it in my kitchen and their kids are like, can we do the kitchen video? Because it's me in my kitchen. <laughs> Just doing, like literally that's where I practice is in my <laughs> kitchen. So, so it's, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy. I don't, I don't, uh, um, now I know Ashanti too. I kind of talked to you about this off, off camera. I, I had, uh, I had a subscriber send me an email a couple weeks ago asking if I would vlog myself for the day, how I work in my shadow work, how I work in while I'm also working and doing my job. And so I filmed myself on last Friday. Um, I got a lot of positive responses. And so I've been asking all of uh, our other uh, channel sponsors if they would consider doing that too, because I promise you guys, we're not skipping off every morning to an ashram where there's glitterly, glittery lights and calming music playing. I mean, we're literally doing what we're doing it in our houses. We're just like you guys are. I squeeze my journaling in when I can. Um, it, it never, it's never as, gl as glorious as you think it's going to be. Sometimes it's better than you think it's going to be, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just work for all of us. So hopefully Shanti, we can get, talk them into doing some vlogging too. So you guys can see what it's like behind the scenes. So is there anything you want to so add? So cool. Shanti? Absolutely. I look forward. Is there anything coming up on Aquarius Rising Africa exciting this week that you want to promote quickly? Anything new? Oh, she froze, you guys, right when... Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, you're back. I'm back. back. My internet, I'm so sorry, this internet is <laughs> not good yet at the moment. Having okay, such problems with the internet. Sorry, guys, it's beyond my control right now. Trying think, to do yeah, the best we can. No big deal. But is there anything coming up for you guys that you want to promote? Like any Sun Kid stuff coming up? Anything on your channels you want to promote quickly before we sign off? Yeah, uh, we've. We, if you if you check on our channel, there's the also if those of you interested in doing the Sun Kids teacher training, etc. It's all there. Sun Kids workshops. They're all available uh, online. Everything is available now. We do have a little video there. Um, on our page, Aquarius Rising Africa, as well as Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa on the latest Sun Kids little blurb. So please go and check it out if you're interested in doing anything with kids or just, wow, it's just such an uh, important and amazing time, you know, and just to work with our kids. Um, it's very, very good for the parents as well. I'll tell you that much as every parent <laughs> who's done it knows. It's an incredible little journey. So anyone, yeah. let us know. We will, I will put all your Let's links down in the description box below so you guys can look that up because I would totally, and I'm sorry I missed last week with the Sophia Co because I got really sick on Tuesday night. I was I was in the bathroom a lot <laughs> Tuesday night, so um, things were literally coming I hope out. Of you're me. okay, yeah. I feel better now. <laughs> I, feel, I think, yeah. It's it was it was gnarly. I was like 
<laughs> my boyfriend stayed home the next day because he was like, I thought you were going to die. <laughs> I was like, thanks uh -huh. a lot. To <laughs> you know, you're just like, yeah, but anyway, I'm I'm better now. I'm so so much better now. So I'm sorry I missed last Wednesday. The Sophia Code obviously is one of the most amazing books I've ever written. So um so um hopefully I'll be hopeful. Oh, fingers crossed! I don't get sick again this week. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I will put everything again down in the description box. Um, please make sure you go and check out Shanti's channel. If you have any questions about the Sun Salutation Challenge, you can either ask them in the comment section below, or you can send me or Shanti a private email and we'll walk you through it. Um, no big deal. Um, everybody is invited to do this. There's no qualification. Even if you're not doing the 60 day shadow work challenge and you want to do this, email me, do it. Yeah. It's your yeah. journey. It's experience so absolutely um, i encourage that that's why i say this is not just for people doing the 60 yeah. day challenge and this template is amazing mm -hmm. because as you can see shanti's worked really hard on it so even after this is over you can hold on to it and do it again yourself if you want to like on your own time too with having the template and um yeah i know shanti and i i can safely say we're not cult leaders you have your own autonomy and so even if you're not doing the 60 day challenge and you want to do this join us like it is you boo it is you do your own thing. Yeah, yeah we are not <laughs> listen i can't even control my dog half the time i'm not trying to control another human being so um, so so it's uh, i'm here to share with you the knowledge that i have gained over the years as is shanti when it comes to the physicality hope you know maybe help you not injure yourself but other than that it's all on you it's all on you it's your journey so we love you guys and thank you so much and we will both see you tomorrow on a uh, monday tomorrow monday on Aquarius. yes nine o'clock in the morning emerald. for the yes. end of the third tablet so nine it's nine a.m for me eastern standard time which is new york city time and what is that for you in south africa what time is that on monday nine o'clock is then uh, uh, six April, Monday is four o'clock, four p.m. GMT plus two. I don't know. We're apparently on cat or something as well. I have no idea. Yeah, uh, but that's so GMT. That's, so four hours. I think you're like six hours ahead of me or something. So four four p.m. for South Africa, nine a.m. for Atlanta, Georgia. Just look on your. It's a live show. It's always a live show. We love having you guys in the um in the chat. So look wherever you are located in the world, just look compared to Eastern time or South Africa time and figure out what that is for you. If you cannot catch the live shows, Shanti and Morning leave all the shows up on their channel. So you can always go back and watch the replay later. But we love having you guys in the audience because we love hearing your experiences with these with these topics as well. So anyway, Absolutely. guys, we love you and we will see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Lots of love. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.